<laughs> Welcome to Trust the Journey. I'm Jason Maletsky. And I'm Melanie Curtis. Our mission is to live, love, laugh, and learn together with you. We're here to create conscious connections, to grow and contribute through our practice of openness, honesty, vulnerability, humility, and trust. Trusting the entire journey. If you want to find us on the wider internet, our website is trustthejourney.today, and it's all our social media as well. Right on, family. Thank you for being here with us. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right, guys. In this episode, we are talking about fear. We're talking about our struggles and about overcoming keeping it wider and open, but on a topic that's really rich and valuable, I think, for literally every human being on the planet. <laughs> you know, getting out of bed this morning and going to the kitchen to make my coffee, I was excited nice. to talk about this. Excited, because I realized it's one of my favorite topics, period. Yeah. Like, absolute top of the list. I love it. Well, tell, say more, like seriously, like tell us why, why were you so excited? Like uh, beyond that, like why is well, it one of your favorite topics? Yeah, sure. So there's a couple things that bring me to the realization of why it's of such value to me. Um, first of all, I'm a massive believer in the ideology of polarity, meaning that all things in this existence have equal and opposites and that in that we find balance. This is the yin and the yang right where everything is equally opposed in all forces whether that's magnetism or electricity or life and death day and night um, everything being having its opposite in some way and one of the philosophies that's come to me over the years um, I actually learned from our fellow friend Brian Germain mm -hmm. and he preaches it a lot and that is that everything is either rooted in one of two core essences and that is either love or fear yeah agreed. and right so the study of this concept that every action is either rooted in one or the other in love or fear brings us to an understanding that there's nothing wrong with with the polarities both of the polarities are beautiful and perfect and balanced and that's exactly the, the way that they need to be but a lot of the time when it comes to love it's, it's an easy thing to wrap our mind around because it's settling, it's easing, it's a removing of tension, it's embracing, it, it, it gives us all the things that allow us to feel at ease in our existence. But opposingly, fear is the opposite. Fear gives us all the uneasiness, all the tension, all the anxiety, all the unknowing feelings the things that we question ourselves or others and that core experience of fear is something that i think you and i and a lot of our listeners in our sky family we engage it intentionally have chosen to do so and do to cho choose to engage fear head on mm -hmm. with ourselves by embracing something that we are terrified of yeah. and making it something that we become at home with that we're okay with and once we we get to the other side of it we realize it wasn't that scary to begin with mm -hmm. and the the fear the scary is really just an emotional experience related to the bigger piece so i'm gonna quote george adair okay. adair yeah. adair uh, and you actually posted this the other day on your feed, and I thought it was wonderful because I had shared it recently in a in a track. I have a, a musical track that has the same quote in it. And the quote from George Adair is, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm. So I just feel this is why it's so personal to me. This is why it's so powerful. It's about basically our whole lives in skydiving, base jumping, you know, embracing love. In, in embracing love, we're embracing fear because they're balance and polarity. Yeah, I there's so much in what you just shared. I obviously this is one of my most favorite topics. My whole <laughs> so much of my life and business and and self is built on overcoming fear, as it were. 
and I, I say that with air quotes because it sounds so, you know, dumbed down, but like the experience that I have had of that quote, for example, like the everything you want being on the other side of fear, it, for me, it has pointed to and it has shown me that how how not limited so sorry guys how not limited i am by that feeling and how when those thoughts come in i basically the fear of fear you sort of pointed to the fear of the feeling like the fear of feeling the feeling and i've seen that so much in myself where it's like oh it's just an experience of a of this feeling you know and that whatever it is that I'm thinking is unlikely to be reality. Does that make sense? You know, so like Absolutely. in doing the thing, then it's, it opens our mind every single time we do it, it opens our mind. You know what I mean? That much more to go, Oh, Oh, I'm continually with when fear shows up in mindset, it, it continually is that thing that basically is, trying to stop us and slow us down, but not in the good way. You know what I mean? Um, so that's one of the things that sticks out to me is just like that experience of the mind opening, that experience of, yeah, the mind opening and the realization of our capability. And that is what I have experienced and found personally on the other side of fear. Another thing I wanted to share, though, that I think is relevant is a lot of times people have reflected to me that I am, that I come like am fearless, you know, and I'm again, bunny ear, air quoting fearless. So for those of you listening on the podcast and not on YouTube, but what I've often shared with people when they perceive me like that is that, and this goes back to the polarity piece, is that in my experience of life, I feel, I have felt so much fear and so much intense fear of various things. And I'm happy to go into more details about some specific things I've feared. But I, I share this because I would not want people to perceive that because I felt like because I have felt so much fear in my own personal experience of life in various forms, I had to figure out how to move through that. Otherwise, I would basically not do anything ever. <laughs> I would exactly. be, I would have such a limited existence and I would just feel tension and anxiety and stress all the time, you know, whether it's in disconnection or achievement or, you know, whatever it else, whatever it is that we want in our in our life. For me, that's been very, very obvious to me that I, I had so much of it. It's my go to response in stress. 100%. It's rare that I get angry and like I'm almost always triggered into a fear state. So I've experienced it a lot. And I, I actually say that that's partly why I've gotten so good at overcoming it is because I've experienced it so much. Does that make sense? It's a, absolutely. It's a practice, yeah. right? Like the, the more that we intentionally create environments in which we will experience fear and we practice navigating that emotional experience and becoming familiar with it while you know we don't have to put ourselves in a truly life-threatening situation where we risk life or limb or injury to have this sensation and it's not always nice to have this sensation right it can be very very not nice and we but if we don't have it intentionally and then when it comes up unintentionally we haven't practiced navigating that experience we're not going to have the skill set or the tool set to be able to work our way through the problem this is a general kind of life concept right like whether it's in fear as the overarching you know because it's really the foundational love or fear piece and that's right at the root of everything or whether it's in communication like we were talking about just recently you know if we haven't practiced it then when the opportunity for it comes around whether it's been something we've chosen into or that we've been forced into we're not necessarily going to know how to navigate through those waters yeah 
I was talking to someone the other day about basically she was feeling out of practice being out of her comfort zone. Mm. And I think this is that's such a huge part of this conversation today is that and you mentioned it, how a lot of us actively choose out of our comfort zone, actively choose into the feeling. Maybe it's because there's an awareness of I want to get better at overcoming fear, as it were, or maybe not. I would I'd say I would say in this conversation to go, hey, if you're choosing stuff that feels out of your comfort zone, if you are choosing to do things that are feeling expansive to you and basically scary to you and but but good in the healthy way then that's you getting practice at this very thing that's you getting practice at navigating fear and that's the thing it's like I would almost wonder I have a lot of things on my list when I was prepping for this episode I was thinking like what well, what do I do to overcome fear you know and I almost I almost don't even want to go there yet I almost want to know more like how fear sh- shows up for us you know what I mean? Like what experiences do you have? Because I have I could talk about a bunch of different things, but I'm wondering if you had any specific experiences or ways that fear shows up, not just in a general sense, but more specificity. I think there's a couple that are right at the top of my list that j- definitely show up immediately and, and have maintained their position throughout my life. So I would give... Um, there's three that come to mind straight away. First is heights. Mm-hmm. The fear of heights is something that uh, it's a it's a real functional fear. Yeah. It has a purpose. It's there for a reason that we are programmed to be afraid of heights because it's keeping us alive. It's healthy ego. It's our body protecting itself. Right. Right. Then there's also the fear of predators or threat is another way to put that so it comes from you know uh, bears and lions and stuff like that you know big animals that could potentially threaten us but there's also the threat of other humans Mm -hmm. right who are dangerous humans so that threat fear and then lastly and this is a big one this is one that i think we all spend a good portion of our life either mincing in our brain and chewing on for huge portions of our life or we just shut it down and pretend it's not the case and that's death right our our own death or the death of others around us loss yeah mortality well they say that all fear i say they say i don't actually know where i heard this to be truthful i think it was on a podcast the other day (laughs) they the mystical they say this yeah uh (laughs) that all fear is a fear of death all fear, if dug down to its core, okay. core, core, is a fear of death. So That makes if, sense with those two comments, right? With uh, falling, death, yeah. predator, death, right? Yeah, but even like disconnection, like for me, right? I've shared this before and it's it's so relevant, I think, just for anyone in, a, in society today where those physical, literal threats are less. I mean, theoretically, they are less. Is that we are safer, more, you know, we're walking around the world not necessarily at as much physical risk as we used to be. Uh, and I bring that up because my fears that I listed are mostly in the emotional realm, like perfectionism, fearing not being loved, you know, fearing not being good enough, those gremlin sort of core fears like that, um, fearing disconnection. So this idea of like fearing disconnection it you know puts us outside of the circle if we're rejected by the people in the thing we end up on it by ourselves in the woods and we then we die theoretically because the clan whatever doesn't protect us anymore you know what i mean so that could go back to fear of death also you know what i mean even though in the present in this day and age it feels like social anxiety social fear you know connection fear love fear that type of stuff. So it feels emotional these days, but really it's still connected to survival. I could go with that. Mm-hmm. I can believe that that in, in, in core essence, you know, truly the, the emotional state of fear is designed to drive us back towards the things that are good for us as far as staying alive yeah. and having a healthy life. Yeah. Right. Keeping us away from danger. Yeah, and I think it's so important to know that and to think about that because especially if we are walking around in this day and age and we 
you know, get rejected or we aren't friends with someone anymore or whatever, whatever happens where we have an experience of disconnection with another person or group, the remembering that we're not going to die. I mean, it sounds so stu stupid almost to say that, but like when we can take it back to a core level, it, it begins to give us access to, oh, okay, there might be something I'm missing here in terms of what I can create in this, in a space. Like it's not my body is responding and my emotional self is responding because I'm maybe not connected to this idea that I'm fearing something that's just simply not likely. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, for sure. This, um, I mean, the topic that we're on, it's so vast. Yeah. It's vast in that it is all encompassing to the entire negative spectrum in our experience right it, you could really label anything on the dark side of emotion as being based in fear true right and with that it really i find it, it i feel ease by simply by labeling that just by going wait a second anytime i'm feeling uncomfortable for any reason there's some little tiny twinge that of social or personal or physical or whatever that it all is just this trigger that's sending an emotional response to my lymphatic system and getting me to feel uneasy to protect me from potential danger to make sure that my life carries on happy-go-lucky right so here's a random one okay just out of nowhere yesterday late afternoon Random salesman comes by the house to check uh, from my water company, right? To make sure that my drinking water from the faucets is within the standards. And he's doing his sales pitch thing. He wants to sell me a water filter. And the guy's wearing uh, some obnoxious cologne, okay? okay? So salesman out there, all right? Salesman, if you're listening, <laughs> don't wear cologne, okay? Don't wear strong perfume. Go like as neutral as you can when it comes to fragrances because this stuff was putting me off so bad I just wanted him out of my house. Oh, God. Okay? Because it was just obnoxious. I'm like, oh, get this guy out of my house. And the thing is, I don't know the guy, okay? He's here hoping to win a sale and he's here safely invited into my home. He's on his side of safety. I'm on my side of safety. But I'm scared to say anything about how much this fragrance is bothering me because I mean truly I'm just like I don't want to say anything but the essence is I'm scared to say something because that might trigger him to respond in some kind of a negative way mm -hmm. right and really I could just be like oh man whatever you're wearing is really upsetting my nose could would you mind going because <laughs> it's just bothering me and it's not really I don't really have reason to be afraid so why wouldn't i just tell him why wouldn't i just say something am i just being courteous i don't want to offend him no but i think in some in the true root of it is that there's some fear that i'm going to receive a negative response to that experience that i'm having you know as, as menial as it is well it's so you pointed to it earlier that people are unpredictable like by period the i thought this too like one of the things is that like that hell has, has helped me get through fear is really really getting comfortable with the fact that i cannot control others or outside circumstances period so there is a sea of unknown around me all the time always <laughs> which sounds yeah. so dramatic but i i love that that sort of big drama of it because it's it's covers all of it right so it makes sense to me i hear that and i go well it's totally understandable you don't know this person there's not trust built yeah there's this sort of agreed upon social engagement where he's the salesman invited to your home and you're the customer so there's some dynamic there but you don't know him you know and it's also who knows how this person feels about his personal choices and how attached he is emotionally to those choices it's super understandable that you would be unsure at the very minimum in that type of idea of sharing that with that person yeah, yeah. 
Tell me about some of your fears, Mel. Where do you where do you really clam up? What locks you down? What do you have to fight through to get to the other side? Yeah. Oh gosh. It's I have thought of I mean, obviously, like I said, I've done so much work on this stuff for myself. And I feel like it really depends on our life experiences, of course. But for me, I, I so often go back to connection and the fear of disconnection. So historically, and I say historically because I feel like I've come a very long way in this area, but historically I've felt very nervous and and anxious and secure in love relationships. And so in that environment, it's that it's a different level of sort of emotional charge that we all have in the, in the love relationship environment versus you know, just even a professional relationship or a friendship, but there's less at stake theoretically for people. And so as a result, I've had to do a lot of work to source love and safety inside myself and really, really heal deeply around that where I source love. Does that make sense? So like I, so that I can really feel safe in the presence of another, of, of a man and be at ease no matter how that goes going back to the idea that we cannot control other people ever at any point you know what i mean and that has been really one of the hugest most powerful things that i have done for myself in terms of emotional healing in terms of cultivating the ability to not let fear control me and my life in in whatever situation interesting yeah it's very, I think that there's a, one of the powerful traits that is expressed in this working relationship is that we're very polaric in our experiences. And as you default to connection and openness and this love intention piece, my default is very polarity based in that it's about self. Mm-hmm. And in a, in a, in my own overcoming of self, and not having any relationship to anybody else, in simply my own fears of death, and what that means to me, and the times in my life where I've been really truly locked down by fear and really overcome by that wave of emotion that just feels like you're caught in a whirlpool in a river that you just can't break out of. And and that current is just swirling you around and you're at the whim of this experience. It's almost always been with no relationship to other people. Yeah. But fascinating. Yeah. Really interesting. And I can't say that that's only the case Mm -hmm. because there are, engagements so i'm thinking of times like um base jumping or heights skydiving uh these kinds of things and then there are other times like public speaking where i've had complete panic attacks (laughs) i've had full panic attack and start shaking and chest pain and and everything tensing up and like you know starting to sweat and that's that fear of uh, of, of of opinion of whatever people think about what it is that I'm sharing or saying at that time, that's m- more based in the one that you're talking about, right? Which is acceptance, which is sharing a part of myself that's truly important to me, something that's it's a personal piece. If I was just talking about you know how green is the grass and how blue is the sky, then that f- share that fear is going to go away because it's not a expression of something that is ultimately connected to my being. It's the times when I've had these fears is when I've been public speaking about topics that are truly passionate to me about things that I care deeply about. Then I feel like, okay, now I'm truly putting my, my being out for others to, to judge, to, to view, to observe. And now I'm going to have the experience of other people's reactions to, to myself. 
yeah. and to whatever I, the things I may be passionate in or believe in or, or care about. It's so fascinating. And I, and I say that because vulnerability in sharing, in being seen and being out there is, oh, it's just, it connects because of that realness of it because it goes to those those inside places that a lot of us hide right so we'll walk around the world and we'll show our more confident sides of ourselves so inevitably in those moments where we open up and we are courageous truly courageous in sharing and being seen and being vulnerable those are it's such a powerful connecting thing and that's like going back to my stuff of of wanting to connect and and have it be relative to others it's and going back to also the polarity is i see this polarity in myself too because i really and i i love i love people truly love them and so it totally makes sense that i would have the equal corresponding fear of not having that yeah, right so exactly. if we really look at what we love you know it almost is I, I cannot imagine any person i mean i really would love for people to chime in on this you know like for for those of you listening please share with us some of your thoughts on this conversation but like i used to i i feel like i remember would remember myself being less acknowledging of that fear side of myself thinking it was weakness, thinking it was, I never really identified it as failure per se, because I don't really identify with that word much, but it was not a fun feel. It's not, it's not a fun feeling. It's not that I never experienced fear. I definitely still do. But my point is, is this particular part being like aware of how much I love, you know, and I, again, I just, sounds weird almost to say it but it's true like I feel like I just I really love (laughs) and so recognizing that polarity and recognizing oh okay got it it makes sense this matters to me a fuck ton you know what I mean so of course I would have some fear of of quote losing that and so I feel like a place where I'm really working as a person is recognizing how much the the love that that love matters to me and also recognizing that it cannot be lost does that make sense as my yeah. effort currently to diffuse that fear that tends to come up on that other side that fear of loss of that thing that matters to me and i only say it like that so that it this idea is more accessible so people listening can go, what is it that I really, 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 really care about? And what do I, and how do I fear losing that? So can I ask you then, Yeah. I'm just listening to what you're saying and what I hear is if your version of what love is, is truly founded in yourself and it is outwardly expressed it's impossible to lose it. But if your version of what love is, is something that must be received from others, then the fear exists that it may not be reciprocated. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, I think, in the realm of relationship, yes. But I mean, I just think even in general of like, uh, the answer is yes. If we are externally sourcing that, then yes, it is out of our control. Thus, we can fear losing it. Yes. And so I think patterned thought, for example, for me, goes goes to that place. And so what I'm doing, and I'm really serious about this, I I believe in being able to retrench and redo our neural pathways. I'm all about that brain science and all that stuff. I'm a huge fan of the science behind our actual literal ability to change our brains in a, in that positive sense, you know? So again, I go back to, I'm just like this. I just don't believe that. I do not believe that pattern thought. Oh, that's how I've always been. So it's how I always will be. I do not believe that. And so like for me, if I see myself defaulting to this separateness, like for me, it goes back to that too, that, that we are all connected 
separateness is an illusion. Those types of thoughts support me in releasing that fear that I feel to be love in the world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're, you're back on the mental muscle piece with this uh, exchange where training the, the brain to operate in any patterned way is no different than training the you know muscle in your arm by lifting weights to make it stronger so that it will now perform in a way that it did not perform before yes yeah i absolutely believe it. i know for a fact that that's true it's neuroplasticity it's the the brain's ability to um reprogram itself in the way that the actual synopsis function and the receptors firing and that practice of of engaging a process repeating it over and over again even if we don't believe so this is great this is what i wrote down earlier actually i wrote <laughs> um i was searching for the um the author of this quote that you had posted and i found one that says i can't do this but i'm doing it anyway <laughs> i love that <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, see, that goes back to my list. So I wrote, you know, I wrote about mindset. So I'm like, how do I overcome fear? Quote unquote, how do I move through it? Yes. Mindset is one where I find thoughts that I believe. And then I, in, then I touch those thoughts with frequency, whether it's writing it on my post it and I see it every day on my wall, whether it's putting a reminder in my phone, but some level of frequency of a mindset that is positive and supportive and alternative to a fear that I also believe it can't be just like I'm faking it, even though there's the conversation around that. But so the mindset thing, but also what you just said in terms of taking action that then will deliver results that in give us access to the new mindset being true. So like I can't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. That implies employing courage. That implies yeah. you feel fear. You do something anyway. You get a result that informs a new idea. Awesome. Yeah. That's, I think, the practice of skydiving, just to relate to, to this, you know, overarching connectivity that so many of us share, is based in that true essence. You're like, okay, I can't do this. I, I can't fly, right? Everybody knows humans can't fly, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and so out you go proving to yourself that you can't fly and you're like yep there i go i can't fly i'm falling like a rock but i'm doing it anyways <laughs> and and then the next thing you know once you've done it enough times you're like oh actually you know my thousand times that i've ch jumped out of an airplane actually does prove that i can fly you know i do have the ability to do this over and over and over again and the, the outcome is not going to be death you know at some point in life all of our outcomes is going to be death but it's not going to be death today, you know. I got to go out and do shit today. I know. <laughs> I got a well, big to-do list today. Yeah, well, and seriously, <laughs> going back to the very, like, simple, well, not simple, but actionable stuff, when I feel it, what do I also do? I, I connect with my physiology. I start to breathe in ways that allow me to release the physical tension that a fear that fear is bringing up in my body i att i att attend to my physiology while i attend to my mindset while i then prep myself for action that i think will inform me in such a way that i want right so that's stuff that's stuff that i do you know and uh, i also do it over and over again i iterate like you said i don't expect you know automatic result i believe and have witnessed and have experienced the long-term nature of this growth process in terms of overcoming fear releasing fear learning and repatterning our mindsets and bodies and responses so that's a thing and the patience and the perseverance of that, you know, the long-term commitment to that effort is something I believe in, which frees me from needing specific outcomes in the short term. So that also releases me from a fear of needing to be anything other than what I am now. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think you're nailing it. You're right on, you're right on target <laughs> with that.
Thanks, team. You, um, yeah. <laughs> go team. Hashtag go team. Go team. Thanks, yeah. teamy. <laughs> um, our physical practice of meditation in the body, meditation of connecting the mind and body together, is so powerful. So I'm going to relate through my experience of both skydiving and base jumping, specifically competitive skydiving, my swooping career in which there's a t competing, putting yourself up to perform in front of a judge who is going to validate or deny your performance is incredibly scary because you're going to be judged. You know, you're, you're choosing into being judged. And with that, you can get a complete fail or a complete success or something in the middle. And you don't have control of the judge's opinion. You have control of your action, your physical movements. And through how do we control our physical movements is through the control of our mind. And how do we control our mind is through the control of our body. So it's this kind of back and forth infinite polarity that kind of loops back on itself. So you touched on it by saying, if I go into my breathing, if I start thinking, okay, my brain starts freaking out, right? Like, oh, dang, shit, I don't know if I can do this. I'm starting to get afraid. I'm starting to have fear responses. Emotions start going. How do I get my brain back under control again is by getting my body back under control. So the breathing practice is so powerful. It's amazing how, okay, here I am standing on the railing and I'm going to walk across the girder. It's 40 foot long, six inch wide girder. And I got to walk to the outside of this bridge that's eight, 900 feet in the air. And if I fall off the girder, it's sure death because I'm going to hit the girders below and I'm going to die. Right. Wow. But it's just a beam. I have the balance and the practice. Come on, I was a gymnast growing up. I know how to walk a balance beam. I'm not do, even doing a flip. I could do a cartwheel on it, for gosh oh, sakes, God. you know? Um, all I had to do is walk across it. But my body starts having this panicked fear response, okay? And so to get my feet to walk down the length of the beam, to get control of my mind which has decided that I'm going to walk across the beam I have to get control of my body well my body doesn't want to do what I want it to do because it's instinctively acting out of life preserving fear and so the way to recompose is to go back inside you know to bring the view the eyes actually turn inward and in you can well, that's an interesting thing to say because how do you look inside you like close your eyes no you want to keep your eyes open but what you do is actually focus on the air coming in through your nose and so your attention moves inward it's not the actual point of vision it's attention right so if i think about this big breath of air coming into my nose, my attention, what I'm looking at mentally, my point of focus moves to this inward flow and that focal point moving inward means I'm thinking about my inside experience. I'm thinking about what's going on internally. And by doing that, I'm presenting myself with an opportunity to now control what's happening internally. And all I have to do is let the air out. And with it goes the tension. With it goes the fear because the release of that, the exhale, now lets me go back to being free of that. And so this simple process of putting our attention to the breath, the deep inhale, the deep exhale, allows us to be focused inward and realizing this is all just happening inside. I can let that go. This is all just happening inside. I can let it go. Yeah. And I'm able to then walk the length of the beam, even if it's in little, small, very calculated steps. And I'll throw one more. This is a, a lifetime of practice. And so I spend my summers mostly jumping off mountains. And it, I would be lying to say that I am not scared. But in truth, I'm not really scared. When it comes to 
walking up to the edge of a mountain to stand right with my toes hanging over the edge of the cliff and prepare to lean forward and then push off my toes and dive into the abyss, into the air, I, my body knows that there is a risk associated with this, and so my body is scared. My mind and my soul are not. I'm not afraid of that. That's something that I love. I'm in, I'm in love with. I love it. It's a passion I've carried. And at times, when I've experienced loss or had connections to uh, these others, um, losing others through this experience, I've had mental question where I'm like, am I, do I really want to continue doing this because I've seen others die in the process? And so I now have a, a emotional fear in relation to that. But when I step up to the edge of myself to go do that, that emotional fear is not there. It, it does not exist. The fear that is there is the physical one that's been genetically coded into my body to help make sure that I don't do things like fall from a height, which would physically threaten me. And mm. so the meditation, the process that I've been engaging for decades and practicing is the breathing process. So when I put my rig on and I put my suit and helmet and everything, as I said, I'm truly not afraid. I'm not in a state of mental fear. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm stoked on it. My body is starting to indicate fear reactions. My body temperature goes up. I start getting like nervous sweat. Uh, I might get clammy on my hands. My respiration is going to change. I start feeling agitated or anxiety, but all these are all physical indicators. They're not truly like the love or fear emotion side the emotion side and the physical side are two different things right I love that you're so making this distinction. Y yeah so my love for what i'm doing is it's raging at that point i'm just in my flow state of being i'm passionately engaging the things that are truly important to me and now this does not need to be jumping off of a cliff for those of you out there this can be public speaking this could be um driving the race car. This could be leading your team of people. It could be leading your congregation. It could be leading your family. Mm -hmm. It could be simply empowering yourself to write words on a piece of paper and to share through your expression of love outward in whatever way, right? Absolutely. And the body gets so worked up and I have to go into this deep, the deeply practiced meditative state and all my friends see it very if you watch me it's a very very s systematic practice and as i start to reach that do the different pieces i do them very methodically everything is slowed to a certain rate of movement and done from one step to the next step to the next step in order to ensure that i don't do anything awkwardly in order to ensure that I don't trigger something a little imbalanced, which is then going to spike my fear response because things are a little bit unusual. And that's what the body's looking for. The body's looking for triggers to warn us, oh, there's a danger coming. Oh, there's a danger coming. And if I'm conscientious about doing things in a methodical way, like putting my attention inward, watching my physical emotions, watching how I'm who I'm close to and what I'm doing, then I can keep myself in a state which allows me to focus on my actions and my breath, and I can walk up to the edge of that cliff fully composed, having done all the steps necessary to get me there, and be able to be in a mind zen state, yeah. which has control of my body, Yeah. right? And yeah. it's such a beautiful, I think it's what calls me back to the experience overall. I think I do love the mountains. I do love flying with my friends and everything. But I think the biggest piece of it, of why I'm called to engage fear on this one-on-one -on -one direct face-to-face, -face, facing myself, facing my own fear and learning to manage my own fear and control my own fear is that that state 
of flow is one that's truly internally controlling my own state of being. My management of self in those environments gives me a state of ease, which is so ironically beautiful that these times where I'm at the highest stress is also the time when I'm at my greatest ease, is where I find my place. And you could be a musical performer about to step out on stage, you know, any time when you think, oh, somebody like, finding that self, finding that self, the Zen, right? And getting to that place where we can then embrace our truest greatness. Because I, 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 mirror, I mirror the, the singer who's standing behind the curtain, you know, and they're there and they're freaking out inside, right? Because they're about to step out in front of the audience and just blare their lungs out and give everything that they're passionate about to the world. And that's the love that you were speaking about earlier, Melody. Yeah, They're about to be, this is my love of everything. And here it is in its entirety. And I don't really care what you think, but I really hope that you're able to see it for what it truly is. And by it, I mean me for what I truly am. Yeah. Right? I love that you pointed to the distinction, like I said, between the physical response and the emotional and soul being at ease. Because one of the things that I wrote down uh, as I reflected and like, how have I overcome fear? How have I grown in this way? And it, one of the biggest pieces for me has been my trust in life and my spiritual practice my my intention to grow in terms of a spiritual practice mindset connection to love right like that has been a huge piece for me to cultivate calm a sense of safety a sense of connection like that has been a huge piece to give me real foundation to continue being out there, being seen, being of service, being vulnerable, being at risk. And again, I'm throwing up the bunny ears for those <laughs> of you not uh, watching on YouTube. But yeah, like that has been a huge deal because I feel like I love your story because that showing this, the, the difference of that, going back to that polarity piece, but going, okay, the body, you know, here, now, you know, that is here. And then there's this other part of me that is, you know, this energy, soul, s self, whatever you want to call it, is different than that, different than that bodily response, is that energetic, that sort of spiritual side of us. And again, I say that with uh, openness to how people receive it, right? Like spiritual could mean any different thi number of things for people. You know, and, and that's a bigger conversation as well. But I cannot have a conversation on how I've overcome fear and learned to, to be at ease in myself without acknowledging that practice. Absolutely. The mind, body, and the soul, mm -hmm. right? The mind is the part, the thinking brain, right? The one that's like thinking about what everything that's going on. The body is doing all the action, reaction. And the soul is the knowing part. Right, yeah. the knowing part and the thinking part, <laughs> they're there to <laughs> yeah. oppose each other, right? They're there to contradict each other, right? Yeah. The knowing part's like, come on, you know you want to do this. This is what you care about. This is what's what you love. Do what you've always want, been meant to do. And the mind part's are like, are you really sure you want to do this? I don't know if this is such a good idea right now. You might fall and hurt yourself. And the body's like, I'm kind of siding with the mind right now. I don't know if you should do this either. And the soul's like, you better fucking do it. You told yourself <laughs> you're going to do it, you know? <laughs> I've had, I've had these conversations like you would not believe <laughs> back and forth. Do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Oh, my like God. literally teetering on the edge. No then, kidding. Oh That's my God. again and again, the iterative process of oh. engaging that internal dialogue between the, you know, soul, mind, body. It's th how we get practice with with that is by doing the things that scare us, which sounds so cliche, you know, and it's again, not being reckless. We've said that. It not being reckless, 
but being intentional and being in the practice of discerning those voices, discerning those messages, right? Whether it's from the body, whether it's from the mind, whether it's from the soul, you know? Oh man, that's awesome. That's why I'm in such rigorous practice around trusting my intuition. Like a, a s little thing that I'm doing is I'm really in this more intent and intentional, actionable practice with my intuition. Like if I think of someone or if I am called to turn down this sidewalk versus that sidewalk in New York City, whatever, I do that because I'm sort of in this practice of listening, however small to that intuitive voice. And that's part of me growing in my listening of my sort of soul side of myself and my connection to things outside of me that I might not be able to see when I'm only only in myself and not connected to the bigger world around me. I'm going to read a quote uh, right now from one of my favorite presidents. I, I like him because he's just so obnoxious and, <laughs> and such a powerful speaker and, and just really just He's be so out of place in this modern day and age, but I think that uh, Teddy Theodore Roosevelt was f phenomenal. So it. it's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled. Credit belongs to the man who really was in the arena, his face marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs to come short and short again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. It is the man who actually strives to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasm and who knows the great devotion, who spends himself on a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of great achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and cruel souls who know neither victory nor defeat. That quote is one that Brene Brown's work has been built on. I've said, I've mentioned her. She's amazing. One of her things, which I think is very relevant to this conversation, is that joy, love, is one of the most quote unquote vulnerable states there is because it is pure and because theoretically we can fear that loss. And so, like, the idea of really being joy being able to be joyful to be love in the world to be connected to be all these things that are connected to those joyful states that we recognize that that takes a lot of courage to allow those joyful enthusiastic connected pure states so that's something i would definitely invite people to start looking at if they haven't been that and to recognize and acknowledge themselves for the courage it actually takes to be joyful. You got me going. Uh, I know. <laughs> you got me going. I'm like, oh man, I want to go do the things I'm passionate about. <laughs> I'm all charged up. It's I'm like, true. I want to dive right into my favorite creative processes, you know, and go I and know. be like, this is how I want to show my love to the world. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I feel you, dog. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, please, you guys listening. We say it every time, but really, thank you so much for being here, being with us. We definitely invite you to share your thoughts, you know, experiences you've had on these subjects we want to expand that conversation obviously that's part of the mission here with trust the journey so thank you for being a part of our family if you received value from this episode please pay it forward uh, share it with other people that you think might also receive value the best recommendation is word of mouth and if you send something to somebody directly i know i do it all the time i constantly see something and i'm like oh you know who's going to appreciate this is so and so and so when you get a message from me directly you know it's because i'm thinking about you and i think that you're going to get value out of it so if you've listened to this episode and you feel like you know somebody who could get some value send it to them share it in whatever way you feel motivated but share share your love share your fear be vulnerable <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we've got our social media channels and our website, which is trustthejourney.today. 
Um, we are also expanding into our Patreon group where we're, ex uh, again, expanding that conversation. Our, our starting goal there is to get 50 people in community there that are wanting to be in this expanded conversation. The reason we're doing that is because we believe in the idea of community and connection and this collaboration with all of us. So like, yeah, it's, it's us sitting here talking every week and, and that's awesome. And we love the idea of bringing more and more of you in. So at whatever level you feel inspired to contribute with Patreon, it could be a dollar a month. You know, that will help keep this project and community and impact and all of it growing. Absolutely. Um, thank you for joining us. And no matter what, thank you. Thank you. We love you. Yeah. Remember, keep laughing, keep loving, and keep trusting the journey.